Good morning, crafty friends. Happy Saturday. I'm Beth Roy, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and welcome to my craft room. So, let's see here. Just um, <clears throat> checking my Facebook page, making sure I'm live in the right place. So, if you come in, say good morning. And if you're new here and you haven't watched my lives before, let us know where you're watching from. So I'm just quickly cutting up a piece of shimmery white for this live. I haven't used this paper yet. I bought it to watercolor with and test it out and I haven't had a chance. So we're gonna play with it this morning. Good morning, Linda, and I think I missed someone. Hold on just a sec. Sometimes. Okay, there we go. Good morning, Jenny. So today we're going to make friendship cards. So today is friendship day, and where would we be without our friends, right? So, I want to make some special cards. And it's World Watercolor Month, so I thought I would grab my watercolor pencils and we could play with those as well. Um, the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set is in our annual catalog, and we've had it for a couple catalogs now. And I just, I love this flower. It's, um, I like to color, that's how I like to relax. And so this is a great flower to color. It's nice and big. Good morning, Vicki. And this is a little ode to the August paper pumpkin um, because sunflowers are the theme for our um, August paper pumpkin. So if you haven't subscribed to Paper Pumpkin yet, this is a wonderful value. You get basically a project in a box and um, they usually get, let us know if it's going to be cards or something else. And it is cards for August. Good morning, Jan. Thanks for joining us. Um, so the August Paper Pumpkin is going to be cards. And the samples that we've seen, the sneak peeks we've seen, um, are just so gorgeous. So I love this. And it's going to come with two ink spots instead of one. And of course you get the exclusive stamp set. So, you know, some of it's a surprise, but we do get a little sneak peek at the box. So I love sunflower. So that's definitely on my list. So I thought we would play with the celebrate sunflowers today. So here's my card that I did. And I, I colored last night and played with my pencils a little bit. So um, today I wanna see what you guys would like to do. I did cut up, I cut up some shimmery white um, and I just cut it to five inches by three and three fourths. And I've never used this paper. So it has like a little, like a, a glittery look to it. So my question for you is we're going to stamp on this and make our card. And I don't know, um, you know, this is a retired designer series paper. Um, but I realized that I hadn't bought all the new color families yet um, for the new pattern. So I just grabbed out something I already had because, well, we all have paper we need to use up. So why not use it? Um, so this morning, my question to you to celebrate our friends and make some cards to send to our friends. So that's our call to action today is we're going to make some cards to send out to our friends to say thanks for supporting us or being there for us, whether it, they're supporting your business or um, whatever they've done for you. Um, just to give a little thanks. Thanks for being you and thanks for being there for me. Good morning, Dad. Thanks for joining us. So I colored this one with my watercolor pencils. 
and I did not activate them with water. So it's just the pencil and the color is very different than if you activate it. So my question is, do you guys want to see me color with the pencils on their own? Or would you like me to use them and then activate them and see how that works? So what do you guys want to see this morning? And while you're answering that, I will show you some of the things I've been working on. So I made two sets of uh, cards this week with my note card one sheet wonder and um, you can find that on my YouTube channel and the templates over on my blog so those links are on my page from this week but if you need them again I can always post them in the comments um, after for the video or you can message me and I will get those to you so I made some note cards and my template makes 20 note cards. So I did some, this sheet of a wash and beauty. And I made a little gift bag to go with it. And I love these embossed treat bags. I have my cards in there. Obviously it'll hold more than what I put in there, but I just used my blending brush and sponge some color on there to step it up a bit. So. I have these, and then I also made this set. So my video shows this, which is a little simpler. You just need a trimmer to do these. There's no die cuts. And I used some of the black and white paper from Perfectly Penciled. So I love this. So I hope you guys will give this a try. Go check that out and make some cards, card sets for your friends. So if you're one of my friends, guess what you're getting this week? <laughs> Thank you, Linda. So I just want to encourage you to, um, you know, say hey to your friends. Even if it's someone you haven't talked to for a while, maybe send them a card. Let them know you're thinking about them. Um... All right. So what do you guys want to do this morning? So I, if we're going to add water, then I'll need to use stays on um, so that uh, my outline doesn't smear. Now, if you want to do a no-line watercolor, then you could use the classic ink and stamp really light and then color and then activate it. So um, there's a couple different things that you can do. What do you, what do you guys want to play with through me, via me? <laughs> what do you guys want to see? Linda says, let's activate it. All right. So, you know, I love to do this and I work, I, I take my time when I do this kind of coloring and I, I go back in and I keep adding in shadows and darker colors um, to really make the petals pop. So I don't know how it'll look when we activate it, but we'll try and we'll just play with it today and see how it turns out. Um, it is World Watercolor Month in July, so um, I've had some fun just playing around and doing techniques that I haven't done for so long, and there's so many that I didn't, I feel like, oh my gosh, it's suddenly the end of July and I didn't get to play as much as I wanted, but that's okay. We can continue to watercolor whether it's World Watercolor Month or not. So there's our sample card, and Okay, so if we activate, do you guys want to do, would you like me to show the no-line watercoloring? I'm not going to even pretend like I'm an expert there, but I have done it before. Or you can stamp and stays on and, um, and then the stays on is a different type of ink, so it does not react with water. Wow, Linda, your sister only does watercolor. Oh, that would be awesome. So I have to admit, watercolor, I mean, I, I don't feel like I'm an expert at it in any, any way. Um, but I do like to practice. And if you, if you practice, then you're going to get more comfortable with um, what you're wanting to try to do. I have done no line watercoloring where you stamp your image really light and you're just using those lines kind of like a guide, but then 
the colors that you lay down are kind of taking over that outline. And you can use that if you um, feel comfortable doing that to kind of make the stamped image more your own. If you like the solid line and you want it to be, um, you know, you want it there, you don't want it to smear, then you're going to want to use the stays on and there's no wrong way. Um, I like watercolor because I feel like it can be really messy and it still turns out great. <laughs> and I am a messy person. I am a messy, messy crafter. So um, I do like I do like doing it. I just kind of get away from it uh, sometimes. But I do, I love our watercolor pencils. I just wish we had more colors. I want more of our color line. So I'm, I'm really hoping that that will expand someday. Vicki, you could. If I stamped it on the Stamparatus, um, I could do the no-line watercoloring, let it dry, and I do recommend you could always use your heat tool to help that drying process. Um, I know I've had people say, well, I don't do it because it takes too long to dry. Well, you can hit it with your heat tool and dry it a little quicker. Um, and then you could re-stamp it. If you've left your stamp on your Stamparatus, you could put your paper back in there and re-stamp that outline. Um, you certainly could do it that way too. And that, that is a great tip. Thanks for mentioning that, Vicki. So what do you guys want to try? Do you want me to try it with the no line? And then I will watercolor it and we'll re-stamp it. Or do you want to try it with the stays on? So there's lots and lots of ways, and I even do that, that re-stamping technique, I even do that with my blends. When I use, like, say, Night of Navy, I you can even go back in with black and re-stamp it and, and have those lines kind of be refreshed. So... <clears throat> And something else you could do, too, is you could emboss it. You could emboss your image. You could stamp it in Versamark and use clear or white or whatever color embossing powder you have and emboss it and then watercolor it. So that's definitely an option, too. Um, it just depends on how detailed your stamp is and how those lines will come out. I showed you on a video, I think at the beginning of this month when we did the embossing and the water coloring that if you have a very detailed stamp, it may not come out as well uh, because of all those little lines. All right, well, we can do it to restamp it. So if you don't want your lines to disappear, you'll want to use the stays on. And we sell the jet black and the saddle brown. And I actually used this one when we did the barn card. So you have seen that one. Um, let's see. Okay, so if we want to do the no line. Hmm. I'm trying to think which brown I want to stamp in because I'm thinking I want to do brown. And if we do no line, you could do like Sahara sand and stamp it, do your water coloring. And I'm going to use the pencils and then activate. So we're not using ink pads. So it's not going to be really wet. Um, so it may not activate that outline as much as if you were using the water painter and your ink pads. So that's the other thing is what you're choosing to watercolor with is going to make a difference. So let me do that. Let's do that. I'm going to, I'm going to stamp my initial flower in the Sahara sand. We'll add in our pencils. We'll activate it. We'll do that. And then when I re-stamp, I'm going to re-stamp with early espresso and make a really dark outline. And we'll just see how it turns out right? It's playing. I haven't done this yet. So it's just us playing and having fun today. Now I do have my Stamparatus here. I got to take my 
Because this is a cling stamp, I'm gonna take, don't forget to take your foam mat out because then it'll be squished. So I'm gonna do this big flower. I love coloring this flower. And there's a smaller one in there too. If you wanted um, to do like a note card or something smaller, you could use the smaller flower. Now on this one, I didn't use any of the leaves. I actually intended to add in some leaves, but I didn't. Um, because I was going to create a mask and then I colored it and completely forgot I wanted to do that. <laughs> so, um, and I used Coastal Cabana to really help my colors pop. So, um, don't be afraid to try something. Don't be afraid. Just try it. Worst cases, you find out you hate it and don't do it that way again. But if you don't try, you're never going to know. Okay, so I'm going to put this into my Stamparatus. You can see I have some gray ink on there from this morning. Um, and now this one, I actually stamped this on the same size paper and then cut it down because I didn't, uh, I had too much white space. So since we're activating it, this is going to probably turn out a little bit different. So let's... Let's just stamp it right in the middle and I'll add in some leaves. We'll just create a mask really quick. And I'm not using, um, this is the shimmery white. So it's not watercolor paper, but I've, I've seen other people use it and say that this is a great, um, a great paper to watercolor on. So we're testing that out as well. And I just, I'm grabbing my masking paper. I am going to create a mask so that I can tuck some leaves in there. So we're just going to do this at the same time. Now, when you do no line watercoloring, if that's your intent, ooh, that's really, my ink pads are really, really juicy here lately. I haven't used this one for a while. Um, this is Sahara Sand. I'm just gonna stamp that right on my masking paper. And it doesn't really have to be perfect on here. I just need the outline. So usually when you do the no line, you stamp off and then stamp on your paper. So we would move this away and then stamp. And you'll see how light it is. And you could also use, you could have used gray granite. Basically, you're just trying to use any light color. So you just barely see it. I'm actually going to stamp it full force because I want to be able to see. I don't, I can't see the lines real well. And so I'm just going to stamp mine the full color and just hope that it doesn't smear too much with my pencil. But I feel like I need those lines. So when you do no line, if you if that's your intent, you actually stamp off so that you barely see the image. I feel like this middle didn't, I don't think I inked it well. I'm gonna ink up that middle again. And this part I'm not worried about because I'm using mostly brown. Now, the other question I have is I used, on this flower, I used crushed curry, um, pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, and a little bit for my shadows, I used early espresso. Do you guys want to do an orange flower like I have? I like the more orange sunflowers. That's just my preference. That's actually what I used to plant. Um, or we could change it up and do a completely different color. We could do, um, a flower that's Calypso coral, more Calypso coral, which is more of a pinky orange. So we could do a different color or we could do, um, we have purples. Um, so what do you guys think? Hi, Deb. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. We are doing some water coloring today. 
to make a card to send to a friend. So it's friendship day. What better thing to do than make a card for a friend? So I'm just, um, I'm just cutting out this mask and putting my scrap back in my, oh man, I hope I stamped on the right side and I didn't. <laughs> oh wait, yes I did. Whew, I got nervous there for a second. <laughs> So I'm just making a mask so I can stamp some leaves. Oh, okay. I do too, Deb, but I, I really, what's funny is one time I accidentally um, bought, I don't know what it was called, maybe a Mexican sunflower? I don't remember, but they were orange and they were actually smaller. Like they, they had a, a bunch of blooms um, like together and then, so it was, it was different. Um, but I loved it. I loved the color. So I'm just cutting around this and I'm, I'm cutting it pretty close to that stamped line. I don't care if it's real perfect. Um, I just, I don't want it to be too far out from the line because then it will create a white space in between, um, my flower and my, my leaf. And I don't really want that. I want to be able to see where I'm, where I'm coloring. I actually had one of these masks and I must have used it so many times it needed thrown away. So I love stacking these flowers. And I actually have a video and you can see it on my YouTube channel. It's from last year around around this time. I did this stamp set with Stampin' Blends. So, oops. I'm trying to do this quick, but my eyes are not cooperating this morning. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm trying to get it pretty close. And this stamp set does have a, a coordinating die set, but if I use the die on this, then it's not gonna be right up on the line. So if you're making a mask, you really want it to be very close. I guess you could use the die and then just trim it a little bit, but I just find this to be easier. Oh, thank you, Deb. Hi, Marianne. Thanks for joining us. Did you just get off work? Are you on vacation this week? Oh man, <laughs> everybody's watching me cut a mask. So I am going to add in some leaves on this one, which I didn't have on my original. And we have a few greens available um, in our watercolor pencils. So we have Granny Apple Green and the Garden Green and Old Olive. So what do you guys think? You want some bright leaves? Um, with the grainy apple green and and I do like to add in a yellow on my leaves as well so we'll just see how it goes but we can do um, we could use old olive for the shadowy part I'll show you how I how I do that and we'll just play. Almost done, I'm almost done. 
So I'm gonna leave my flower right where it is. I don't wanna move it because um, if we want to re-stamp it, then you, you need it in the exact same place, especially this is a red rubber, so it would be impossible for me to line it back up And really, it would be um, without just leaving it on my plate. Okay, so I have my mask. My goodness, and a huge mess. <laughs> and I'm going to grab my other plate so I can. And you don't have to stamp the leaves again, but we're just going to. I'm just going to stamp uh, maybe one because it has this big leaf and maybe these two little leaves. Thank you, Anne, for inviting people. Let me see. Oh, so you, um, Linda thinks we should decide after we do the flower. Okay, well, that makes sense. So I'm going to, um, this just peels off. So it does matter which side you stamp on. Um, if it has the side that, um, bends, then you need to stamp on the other side. And I'm just um, lining this up over top of my flower. And then we're going to, I'm going to take this plate out. Yeah, I could use the top. I, I just, when I'm on here filming, it's hard to do it this direction. And let's see. I'm a little close to the edge here. I might have to pull it out a little bit. I'm trying to decide, do I want the leaves just on the bottom? And then we have these two little leaves, which I think are supposed to go with the smaller flower, but I, I think it's okay to add them in here. I think it'll be okay. What do you guys think about that placement? And we could always, even after we're done watercoloring, I've not tried this, but I'm assuming that even after I'm done, if I wanted another leaf, I could put my mask on and stamp another leaf. Um, now I will warn you, sometimes when I use a mask and I've stamped a really dark color, that color is on the back, on the sticky part. So you just want to be careful not to, to go too quick. So we'll try this. I'm going to stamp it in the Sahara sand. You're not a fan of the leaves. So Vicki says she likes it. Linda says she's not a fan of leaves. So you think without the leaves, we don't have to have leaves. Um, on my original, I didn't use leaves, so you don't have to use them. I'll let you guys vote. What do y'all think? And we don't have to use both leaves. Um, I don't know if I have my card nearby that I made before. So this is this is a process where we're where we're all involved. So let me know what you guys think. Jump in. What about just the double? So, um, so there's my original. And now remember, this isn't activated. It's just with the pencils. Oh, well, that's, that's okay, Linda. Your opinion counts too. I actually do too. I think that's why I forgot to stamp them last night is because a lot of times I just like the flower without the leaf. And I do like them offset. So you notice mine's not in the middle. Um, I do like my flowers offset a little bit. Um, I don't know. Those are my preferences. But I do like you to explore what you think and what you might like. So it's okay to, um, to throw those opinions out there. That's what we're here for. That's what our Saturday mornings are all about. So if you love leaves, you might say, well, when I stamp mine, I definitely want leaves in there. And that's okay. So Jan says no leaves, okay? So 
Anyone else want to throw their, their ideas out there? I'm just sipping on my coffee. And guess what? I'm using my favorite pumpkin mug today. Wait, can you guys see it? I don't want to spill my coffee on my thing. But I know this is a fall mug. <laughs> Hopefully you can pretty much see it. Um, but I love these colors. To me, it looks like a pumpkin pie. And then on the front, it's a white, like a cream colored mug with brown outlines. And it looks like a pool party pumpkin. So... <laughs> Linda, it's okay, Linda. Um, I I feel you. I was actually, um, last night I pretty much colored the flower and then I finished my card this morning because it took all my energy to color it. So Marianne votes for one leaf on the bottom. I agree, Vicki. That's what we're here is to spark, spark ideas. That's a good word. So we could do just two little leaves, which, or one big leaf. Which I don't know, I, you know, I can't really recall exactly um, if sunflower leaves are really close, close to the flower. Let's refer to our, so I guess you have these little ones, but you wouldn't see that. And so these are more down on, on the end. So it, it would be fine without it. Any other votes? I have a vote for one leaf, a vote for two leaves, and a, two votes for no leaves. Anyone want to throw, throw their hat in the ring here? Which, if we don't have any leaves, then we don't need the mask. And I'll tell you, what I do with my masks is I normally tuck them inside here for the next time I want to make cards. And I love this stamp set. I like to color this stamp set. So, um... A lot of times I usually have a mask tucked in here because I like to do two flowers normally stacked. Um, so they're, it looks really busy. But watercoloring, I try, I don't really do a lot of stacked when I'm doing the watercolor. All right, so I'm gonna grab out my colors here. And I personally, I loved the Coastal Cabana with this because I thought it really made my colors pop. So let me grab out my colors. And I used Crushed Curry. Now we do have Daffodil Delight. So if you wanted some brighter spots, you could throw that in the mix too. And I just, I have one of these, um, we used to sell these wide stamp cases and I had a bunch um, that I cleaned stuff out of. And so I just threw my pencils in there because having two separate boxes was just too much for me. <laughs> but this is both sets of the watercolor pencils. And I just cut my box apart and tucked that in so I could have my colors on there. So I've got pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, Crushed Curry, Early Espresso, and you can see many of my pencils are well loved. They're so short. And then I grabbed this out just in case we want to add a little bit brighter flower. But originally, I did not use Daffodil Delight. So no one else has a vote. All right, I have an idea. Let's just leave. We'll leave the leaves off, and when we get done watercoloring... If we feel like it needs leaves, then we'll stamp them. And then we'll test out that um, adding a mask after you've watercolored. Maybe. So I'm going to take this and stamp it, put it in my stamp case because it can be used lots of times. 
And since we're gonna use a little bit of water, let me pull a few things away here. I'm going to, I might watercolor right on this because it, this is easy to clean up. So I'm gonna move my magnets. I saw someone else do this. I don't even remember who it was or where I saw it. Um, it could have been a reel. So they had the foam mat that has this um, slick surface on it, and that's what they used for watercoloring, which I normally just grab out some paper towels myself. But, and I do recommend having paper towels. So let me grab my water painters. Mine's still have water. I'm gonna grab, um, I am gonna grab a paper towel. This is something I just keep in my craft room anyway. I have a roll of paper towels here. <laughs> Vicki, hey, if we don't test them, you'll never know. So I'm going to do this right on here. And I have heard that when you keep your paper wet, that sometimes that's better. So I'm still learning. These are still things I'm learning as well. So let's get to coloring. Oh, and I used, on my background, I used Coastal Cabana. But once we um, color, we may want to change that because we have Coastal Cabana or Bermuda Bay, and I love those with the orange. I think it just makes that orange color pop. So um, this is kind of, when I do this kind of coloring, it's a long process, but I'm just going to quickly add color to all my petals, and I'm using the Crushed Curry. You don't have to cover the whole petal. When we activate this, sorry, I have a glare. Is that bothering anybody, That my ring light? I'll try to move it a little bit. Um, when we um, activate the pencil, the water moves. Now, I haven't used this uh, shimmery white yet, so I don't know how it's going to move on the shimmery right, white, but we're going to test it out. So I'm just lightly, so I'm not pressing really hard. I'm just adding crushed curry. And this may end up being a brighter flower because crushed curry looks quite, um, I don't know, I would call it a mustard yellow almost uh, when it's just the pencil. But when we activate it with water, it's going to look different. So I think this is going to be fun. But we also have to remember that we stamped with um, Sahara Sand and I didn't do it light. So that color is going to affect our pencil color as well. Uh, something else you could use if you have the um, blender pens, you could use those and it doesn't react, uh, it, it still can, but it, it reacts, it's different than um, just using a water painter. So give it a try, try something new. Like I said, worst case scenario, it doesn't turn out and you think, okay, make a little note. I didn't like that. I don't like the results, whatever it is, and and move on. If you don't try it, you're not going to know. My favorite thing to do with watercolors is just the backgrounds. I love watercolor backgrounds. So I'm not adding in any detail here. I'm literally just adding color. You don't have to color the whole petal. So if, if I'm doing it this, this way, I am coloring a lot of the petal. This way, we're going to activate it, so we're not going to, we, we can leave a lot of white space. That's the other thing with watercolor. I've always heard um, to leave more white space. I'm not very good at that tip. Um, I don't know. My, my mind just doesn't think that way. But I'm practicing just like everybody else. And I'm learning. And I like to do, I take classes, too, from other um other artists, true artists, and um, to try to gain tips so that I can, I can do better too. Okay, so I just did a real light um, layer, real light hand. You don't want to press hard. Um, and then I'm going to go to my next color. Uh, you could activate this and then let it dry and, and add your layers that way. I'm just adding some color in. So this is how I did this originally. 
Um, I wanted the orange to kind of just make it a little darker. So we'll see. I may love it. I may hate it. We may just restamp it and start over. Who knows? <laughs> so I'm just adding in a little. And I'm going right on top. And I'm kind of trying to keep it toward the bottom a little. And I definitely want to have darker spots where these petals overlap. And how I do that is different when I'm watercoloring versus just using the pencil. So, how many have you tried? How many have tried watercoloring this month? Uh, Stampin' Up! has really focused on watercoloring because it's watercolor month. So, I'm just curious if you've tried it. And what, what have you used? Have you used water painters and the ink pads? Um, I do that. I tend to do that a ton. Um, have you tried the watercolor pencils? Let's, let's get chatting this morning. Now you don't have to use pumpkin pie. Um, you could just, um, you know, you could just activate the yellow and then go back in and add darker yellow. You can also use gray to kind of change um, the tone of your yellow. So you can also do that if you don't like the orange tone. There's lots of things you can try and test out. I feel like I got all of them. I'm coloring so light, some of them I can't tell. Oh, Linda, I'm sorry. I, I know it can be frustrating, and trust me, um, Jenny, who has been stamping with me for a very long time, can tell you I've had a lot of fails. Um, there's a lot of times I try something thinking I'm going to get this beautiful result, and I throw it away. So just know that lots of crafters are trying new things and practicing and testing things out, and we all have fails. So... I don't know what what's the easiest way. I think really once you kind of get comfortable with a certain way, um, you just um, maybe always go to that. So a lot of times um, I use the pencils and activate them, but I don't always love my results. So I do like using my ink pads with my water painters. But there, that's a, a lot different method because it's, a, it's wetter. This way, I feel like I don't have to use very much water. And I can still get good results. So these are, um, I've been using these a lot. So I don't have a ton of water in here. But I'm going to use, this is the medium-sized brush. Actually, I think I'm going to use the smallest one. So I'm going to grab the smallest brush. I have a little bit more water in here. And I'm just going to get my tip wet. So I'm gonna squeeze it over here on my paper towel and I'm just gonna get some water flowing. I don't want it to be really, um, I don't want it to be dripping. And I'm just gonna start activating this crushed curry and pumpkin pie and see if I like it. And then I'm going to add in some Cajun craze. That's kind of what I used for the shadow. So we're just gonna start here and I might need to come back in and add more color on top. So when I'm doing just pencils, I do a light layer and then I go back in and I keep pressing harder. So let's see. So that's really light. So I'm going to, I just did a test one. I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna test one over here and I'm gonna add, I'm gonna do a little bit heavier hand on the tip here. And I'm gonna add in some Cajun craze. So I'm just kind of experimenting. 
to see how this is going to go. And I, I tend to do darker toward the, the base. And then I'm going right over that Cajun craze. So this is how I would color it. And, and it doesn't, I worked this a lot. I went petal to petal, light, doing light layers, and then just darkening it until I got it how I wanted it. So it's going to look different every time you do it. Okay, now this is still damp. So I'm just going to activate that pencil. See how it moves around? Can you guys see that? So that it moves, it spreads, and it blends. Go ahead and activate the one next to it as well. So that's when a darker one. So I activated this one and I had just done my light layer and then this is activating a dark one. So what do you guys think? It's going to look a lot different than just pencils. So Linda, when you, um, when you watercolor, are you using the pencils and then activating them or what method are you using? I'm just curious to see if we can help if anybody on here can help you troubleshoot a little bit, um, we're all learning. There's no, I don't know if there's actually a wrong way to watercolor. Um, but I would like to think that, you know, whatever method you come up with that works for you is the right way. So, I'm just going to go ahead and add in all my colors and darken them. And we'll see where, where it goes here. And I do like to do my darker color and then I come in, um, I come in with that crushed curry and do it last. So it's always a good idea to start out with a uh, light hand and then darken it. And I'll show you how I did the early espresso too. So if you don't have water painters, if you don't own those yet, you could use a little cup of water and a, a paintbrush, like a tiny paintbrush. So I'm putting this um, Cajun craze kind of where these, these petals meet and where there might be a shadow or where they overlap. Um, and I do turn my, my paper with the direction I'm coloring and the way the petals go. Good morning, Rose. Rose, you can um, you can use your ink pads and a water painter and a paintbrush or a blender pen. So a lot of times um, you can squeeze your ink pad and get ink in here and and dip out of it. 
drop water in and thin it out and watercolor that way. I do that a lot. Um, you can, if you have re-inkers, you can put a drop of re-inker on a block and watercolor that way. Um, and we have pastels. I did, I did get the pastels, but I have not even used them. So the pastels are a way to um, watercolor as well. You can use the um, water, water painters with those. Um, I don't know a lot about those. I haven't really used them yet, but I've seen other people using them. Nope. Okay, that's the one I already activated. So it's going to be a little different. So I'm using the lines that the stamp has given us. If you did this as a no line, you're going to be kind of just drawing in your own shadows and, and where you want things to go. Because when you add the water, the idea is that those lines disappear. Yeah, I sometimes I get really sharp lines too. I haven't been using this as much as you as you can see. Um, sometimes I get really sharp lines too, and I I try really hard to. There's all these techniques you can use to apply your pencil, um, like circles and cross hatching. There's all these ways to blend. I'm still learning all those ways. Uh, so I just kind of layer my colors. And this is just a rough, um, I'm just doing this rough because I know we're going to activate it instead of just leave it the textured pencil. And, and how much pressure you use is is going to adjust your color as well so if I wanted this to be really light I would I would not color as hard or use as much pressure if that makes sense and when I activate this and I don't know the best method. Um, I would suggest practice and try and see what you like. I'm doing all my coloring and then I'm going to activate. You may want to color a petal and then activate it and then move to the other side of your flower and try a different one. And this is also, um, this is the shimmery white paper. So it's a little bit different than if, say, we were using the watercolor paper. So your paper choice uh, varies your results as well. I have used the basic white um, and done this, but you have to be careful not to get it very wet because basic white will start to separate as it gets saturated. And like I said, you can leave white space. That's actually recommended. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> so I might add in just a little bit of orange here and there. And remember, we did this one already. I feel like I need a little, it needs a little darker here. So watercolor is meant to be a softer look. So it's not going to come out like my straight pencil drawing because we're, we're trying to soften it. So now I'm just going to start activating. 
and my, my brush is still damp from earlier. And if you want a little more water, just drip a little more out. And I'm kind of skipping around. I'm skipping petals. I just gotta remember which ones I did and didn't do. So this is gonna mix together. And if you want the yellow to stay real yellow, um, when you're activating it, once you touch the Cajun Craze, um, don't go back into the top without wiping your brush off. So I'm just doing little strokes because I want a lot of that darker color to stay where I put it. I don't want all of it to blend. And you can go back in and add some darker spots. I need it to be a little wetter. It's not moving as much as, as I want it to. So this looks a, really a lot different and you could have just used one color. You don't have to layer a bunch of colors. You don't have to do that. these I'm activating all together. We'll see how it turns out. Since I'm not doing it really wet, I don't think it's going to hurt anything to do the ones right next to each other. Usually if you're, if you're using watercolor paper and you're really saturating your paper, you don't want to do right next to each other. You kind of want to skip around a little more water. Can you guys see the difference as it's activating? Can't tell. I can't tell how close I am. So it's a, it's really is a different look. So see, this one's not activated yet. And the ones next to it are. The rose, the watercolor paper, um, it will take, uh, it's textured and it will take a lot more water than the other paper. So basic white, you can hardly, you can't saturate it uh, much at all before it starts separating or pilling. Um, so watercolor paper, it can absorb a lot more water. And when you watercolor, Anywhere that that paper's wet, your ink and color will move. It will flow onto the paper very differently. So this is the shimmery white. So it's a little bit different texture and it has a little bit of a glitter um, look to it. And I've seen a lot of people use this for watercoloring. It will take a little bit more water um, meaning it'll absorb a little bit more water than the basic white cardstock. 
So if you like uh, true water coloring and you want to use a lot of water and mix colors and um, even the no line, because then your line will definitely disappear because you're using a lot more water, uh, that's the advantage of that paper. I don't use it as much. Um, it is... Um, it, it is it comes in five by seven and it's a it's a more expensive because of the texture and the type of paper it is so I tend to try to find ways to use what I already have um, I do have watercolor paper but I use it sparingly um, so I use it like if I want to make a background and you really want your background to come out smooth and flow and you want that uh, ink to blend, then the watercolor paper is the best choice. And I haven't tried those backgrounds with this shimmery white. So I haven't tried those yet. Um, so this may be an option as well. Are you guys still with me? Sorry, I might lose my internet for a second if you're still with me. Um, I'm going to hang tight for a second. Um, if you're with me, just comment because Okay, are we still here? <laughs> Yay! I waited it out, so I'm really sorry about that. Um I just tried to type a message. Don't know if it came through or not um, because my laptop is still slow. So yay, thank you all for hanging hanging around. Um, my power went out. <laughs> so I am so sorry about that. Um, so that is the advantage of watercolor paper versus the shimmer white versus just regular basic white cardstock. I say try what you have. Just know if you're doing a background, it is not going to come out the same. And so that's usually what I reserve my watercolor paper for. You could do this on watercolor paper too, though. I'm just squeezing a little bit more water out and trying to activate the rest of these petals. I'm just going to go quick. Normally, I would really take my time, especially if you want white space um, and all that, but I think we'll still end up with a beautiful card. I'm not using enough water to, um, I think, worry about my petals and overlapping and all that. Well, that was really crazy. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened, but hopefully the power stays on. Okay, so you can see some of my spots have a lot more orange. Um, some are brighter yellow. See, that yellow looks really different when we activated it versus over here. So what do you guys think? I feel like I almost need to add in a little more. This has a little more um, Cajun craze. I feel like I need to add in a little bit more. So anywhere that my petals overlap, I just try to add in a little bit darker. And when I'm doing dry pencils, I actually use early espresso and my gray and um, whatever. So this is, um, I think this is a little bit different than if I were on watercolor paper. I think it would, um, I mean, it's blending, but I think it would move differently. I do like this paper. I, I mean, I'm using water and I don't feel like it's, um, I don't feel like it's pulling apart or anything. So you can always add more pencil and go back in and activate it again. I think I'm, I'm I think I missed one right here. 
There we go. Like I said, if you want it to stay more yellow, just um, might want to clean your brush a little bit. So something I like to do, especially on this one right here, um, now we have to do the middle. I like to make this really dark right here. Because that petal coming across is making a shadow. And then I just add a light layer. We're going to add some water to this and really see if we can get it to move around. Like I said, I even put early espresso in here for my shadows. So I like to use the Cajun Craze and the Early Espresso. So this is just kind of how I get it to, to pop a little bit. And then you can go back in and activate it. We're gonna see how this moves. So I'm taking it and I'm pulling it into the middle of the flower. And I used I used Cajun Craze a little bit on the middle too. So when when your paper's wet and you use your, your pencils, it automatically starts activating it on the end. I want this a little darker. Darker along the edge here. So I'm just coming in and I'm adding a little more pressure because I want that to be darker. And I'm actually gonna make this a little darker too. So, what do you guys think? Do you like it better activated? I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this bigger brush for my middle because I want I want to test out a lot of water. I'm gonna put a lot of water on this. See, do you guys see it moving when it activates? So I'm adding quite a bit of water and I wanna pull that color into the middle. Now, we are gonna restamp this. We're, we were gonna try that technique. So, I'm gonna stamp it in early espresso, so I'm not too worried about some of those lines. So, on this one, I stamped and colored, and I didn't restamp. So, I just kept layering my colors. And so, on this one, we're gonna restamp it, and we're gonna see. 
What do you guys think? I feel like I need a little more color over here. And I'm just using kind of a circle, circular motion. And remember, this is wet, so it's gonna activate just a tad. And I can actually, this is um, starting to kind of buckle on me. So, and it doesn't move, it's not, uh, it doesn't move quite like the uh, watercolor paper. So that, this result is different. But we're going to re-stamp it and see how it comes out. So there's our flower with the activated pencil, and this is without adding water. So we haven't done the outside edge. I think I'm going to re-stamp my image and then do around my flower. So this one came out a lot more yellow because when you activate that crushed curry, it's actually a really nice dark yellow um, where when you color, I think it's more of a a brown yellow, like a wheat, what I would call wheat color. So let's re-stamp it. I'm gonna clean my brushes. I'm just squeezing them into my stamp and scrub over here. You just squeeze the water until this, until it's clear, like this, and then your brush is clean. And these come in a set of three, so I didn't even use this big one. This big one I use for backgrounds. So, moment of truth. Let me grab my plate with our flower on it. So, okay, here's a big decision. Do you think we should re-stamp and then do the background? Because I just realized I wanted to smear that background. This one I did kind of a like a cross hatch, um, but we didn't activate it. So what do you guys think? Should we do the background before we stamp the outline? Because I definitely don't want to pull that. Uh, I don't want to pull early espresso into my beautiful bright um, background. So we could do Bermuda Bay, which is going to be a little bit darker, or Coastal Cabana. And you can choose Balmy Blue or Pacific Point. What do we have here? Yeah, Pacific Point, Balmy Blue, or Knight of Navy uh, if you like those blues. But I, I like the more teal blue, so that's, that's what I'm picking. So I can... I can do the background. Let's let's do that. So you guys, do you guys want to try the Bermuda Bay with it? It's a little bit different color, but I love it. Um, yes, I agree, Vicky. Now that I'm thinking about it, and that's sometimes that's what my process looks like. I think, oh, I'm gonna do it this way, and then I put the brakes on and say, wait, that's not a good idea. So you guys actually see my process as well. And hopefully I save you. <laughs> if I make the mistake, then I save you from making the mistake, right? Okay. So let's try it with some of the Bermuda Bay. So I'm just going to, um, I've already activated my flower, but I'm just going to start with Bermuda Bay and I'm just making little lines back and forth around my flower. And you can do it darker down in um, the petals. And you can make it go out as far as you want. So this is really your own preference. You could do little tiny circles. You could do dotting. You can stipple just like I do with the markers. I call it dot, dot coloring, but the true name for that in the art world, I believe, is stippling. 
Uh, and you can do that with your pencils. It's gonna take you a little bit longer, but if you like that texture, you certainly could do that. Um, I just tend to do it like a crosshatch or like a circular. Um, circular coloring motion. Like I said, I'm still practicing all those. There are actually techniques. You can search for them. Lots of artists are willing to help you improve. Um, I follow a couple. Um, there's several in Australia that I follow, and then I follow another one called Kitten Chowder. I think Kitten Clowder. I'll have to look at that. <laughs> I know it's Kitten something. Um, but I love, um, I just love it. So what I did on my original is I did this and then I went the other direction to kind of create a crosshatch. Um, basically that just means you make lines one direction and then you switch directions and um, add more. And I'm gonna add in some of this Coastal Cabana further away from the flower. So I'm, again, we're activating it. So I'm not worried about if it's perfect because it's gonna smooth out. And then I'm going to, just gonna add in, this is Coastal Cabana. So don't get, conf or no, I did that backwards, whoops. This is Coastal Cabana. I do this to myself every time. The Coastal Cabana pencil is actually darker on the end than the Bermuda Bay. So let me go back in here. Sorry about that. I accidentally did the lighter first. That's okay. We're gonna go with it. I'm not gonna let it stop me. I'm just gonna add Bermuda Bay right on top of that Coastal Cabana, and it's gonna mix, so I'm not worried about if it's perfect. Things happen. I do this every time. I don't know why um, the ends of the pencil look like that, but they're actually opposite. So if you're like me, you probably confuse yourself all the time. That's okay, we're just gonna go with it. I thought it looked awfully light. Should have double checked the color on the pencil. So a lot of our watercolor pencils, the ends do not look exactly like the true color. We're just gonna go with it. Now, let me add this back in a little bit further from the flower. If we hate it, we can use a die cut or Cut, a, cut around it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Vicki. You know me. See, even I make mistakes. I'm going to take that medium-sized brush and I'm going to get the tip really wet. And I'm just going to start pulling this away from the flower and activating that pencil. And I like when my edge is just really messy so I'm not going to worry about smoothing that edge. I'm just smoothing these pencil lines. That's my preference. So again, if you like it a different way, don't be afraid to do it different than I did. Test out. Maybe if you like it, um, like I have a lot of uh, space here between my lines. Try putting your lines closer together if you don't like that look, or try to do a circular motion. 
I'm just trying to not mix it with my flower. I don't want to mix it. So I'm, I'm starting at the petal and I'm pulling it away. And you can do circular motions. You can do back and forth. Remember, this is my first time using this paper and trying this. So these results are real. I haven't practiced this. <laughs> I'd like to say I tried everything, but I haven't. I do like to play a lot. But a lot of times I don't activate these pencils. I just like, um, I like the results uh, and the texture from the pencil. But this is a different kind of texture. I do like it. Um, so I'm glad I tried it today. Thanks for pushing me out of my comfort zone too. Ooh, nice, Vicki. I hope you'll share with us. Did you use the pencils with the paintbrush? So you can use the, um, if you have blender pens, it's a little bit different solution. It's, I, I forget what it is. It's not water, it has something with it. Um, and the look is very different. So, um, now I have a very wet brush. You can probably see that water. And I'm trying to turn it so that I'm not, I don't have my hand in it, but you know, I'm kind of messy, so it doesn't always work out. That's okay. I'm trying to pull that color up and away from my flower. That edge looks really messy, doesn't it? You can always add more pencil. So, okay. Hopefully, hopefully Vicki will share with us. So again, the background doesn't move exactly like it would on watercolor paper, but it definitely moves a little bit more than it would on the basic white. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Would you do it differently? It's okay if you would. I really want you to think about those things because I want you to try these techniques and, and make them your own. That's okay, Vicki, you don't have to have the water painters. A paintbrush works just fine. So here's my result so far. I don't know if I love my edge. I may add a little bit more pencil in and activate it and move it around. But you can see, you can definitely still see that I cross-hatched. I didn't do my lines close together, so it left a little more white space. Um, but you get the idea. So if you, now remember, that's... So if you, if you wanted more, you could come back in. This is Coastal Cabana. And remember, it's wet, so it's gonna start activating right on your paper. Let's just drop some water on there and see what happens. <laughs> yes, watercolor is definitely a texture. And you know, I love texture, so I like to try new things. What do you guys think? Are you, now see, you can see how wet that top is. I literally put a drop of water right on it and tried to move it around. And now on this one, I didn't like all the white space, so I cut it down and I stamped in the corner. So we could stamp, we could dry this and stamp along the top and leave that white space and just mount it onto a card base. So everything doesn't have to be layers upon layers. I love layers. If you like it more simple, simply let this dry, restamp it. And 
Another thing I like to do, and this block is not clean, so I would not use it, but you can lay the block down as it dries and it'll help keep it flat. Oh, Linda, I hope so. I hope you do. And I hope that um, maybe with a little practice, your, your frustrations will lessen. Um, I certainly know those frustrations. I have them with all of them. There's days that I'm frustrated with how my blends coloring's turning out. So, um, so I say just try the, you know, and, and and I really believe that if you practice, um, and you want to use these techniques, you you have to practice them. Um, the colors I used were okay. I didn't end up using that daffodil delight, but you certainly could. Um, I used a little tiny bit of pumpkin pie over top of the crushed curry. So with a very light hand. And I was just trying to kind of mix those two colors. Um, but you don't have to do it that way. You could just use the crushed curry. I also used Cajun Craze. And I used Early Espresso. And then on my background, I use the Coastal Cabana and the Bermuda Bay. So if you want a brighter yellow flower, use the Daffodil Delight with the crushed curry. You don't even have to use the orange colors um, if you don't want to. You don't have to use Cajun Craze and crushed curry. Those were just my preferences. Oh, Linda, I hope so too. I hope so too. So if you liked my video today, and I know we're going over, please make sure you give me some hearts and let me know that you enjoyed this. And I'm going to quickly stamp this, even though this isn't completely dry. Um, my heat tool is nearby, but it's not plugged in. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-stamp it because my flower is dry. And we're going to just complete our card. So I put this right back into my Stamparatus. Remember, we stamped this. I have not moved this flower. Do not remove your flower if you want to be able to do the restamping. I am going to grab my magnet from back here. And I'm, I had this right in the corner. Now, remember, my paper has buckled a little bit because I've, I've gotten it really wet. So I'm going to have a magnet hold that down. And I'm going to grab one of my broken ones here and hold this corner down. And I might even hold that one down. I really want it to stay flat because I wanna make sure that it lines back up. That needs to move up a little bit, okay. So remember, I got this really wet, so I wanna make sure that it's gonna stamp well. Now, Early Espresso is very dark, so I could either re-stamp it with Sahara Sand and see how that looks, or I can go straight to Early Espresso, or you could use Crumb Cake or Soft Suede. So you can use any brown that you want. And even if I only had Sahara Sand ink, I could ink it and stamp it, ink it and stamp it. So what do you guys wanna try? Do you wanna try this Sahara Sand and see how that looks, or do you wanna jump straight to the darkest brown Early Espresso? <laughs> Vicky votes soft suede. I know it's tough, Linda. That's why sometimes just start out light. If you don't know, start out with light, the lightest color, and then you can always change it. That's the beauty of the Stamparatus. We're going to re-stamp it. It's okay. And then I just grabbed these because I think I want to mount this on a really bold color. So I want that color, that flower to just pop off. So we're going to stamp our greeting on the top part and we can trim it down a little bit. And we're just going to do a really simple layer. We're going to do a card base and our colored, our, our layer. Um, and we could maybe do a mat if we want to mat it. Okay. Okay. Let's just try it. Let's try it this way.
you guys um, want to, we want to practice this anyway. So this is the Sahara Sand. I want to make sure I get that middle really well. And here goes nothing. Who's nervous? Who's nervous? Anybody else? And I really want to add back in the texture of the middle. What do you guys think? That was Sahara Sand. So we might not want to go darker because early espresso is really going to be a dark brown and it may change the feeling of your flower. But I tell you what, I'm going to show you guys a little trick here. <laughs> I do want my flower middle to be early espresso and I feel like it's just not dark enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab... I have a, a load of sponge daubers over here and I have a little bucket next to me that I keep all my daubers in and all my extra glue and stuff. And let me find a dark one here. Oops, this might be red, but I think it'll work. Oh, no, there's a brown. Okay, so... I keep all these sponge daubers nearby. <laughs> uh, Vicki, I'm glad you're not nervous because I am. I want this middle to be really dark. So I'm going to pick up some ink with my sponge dauber and I'm gonna dab it right on the middle of this flower. And I'm gonna restamp this. Because I, I like my, my middle right here to be really dark. I'm not sure why that's not, it doesn't want to stamp. Why doesn't it want to stamp right there? Maybe it's just the stamp. Okay, try it again. Maybe it's the texture of the paper. I'm just holding it there. I want it to kind of soak in. Maybe, oh, you know what? I bet it's the pencil texture. It's the texture of that pencil that I laid down. So the pencil does leave marks and it leaves a little texture, but it's like, um, I don't know. I'm going to activate it a little bit here. So I think it's just the pressure that I had from that that pencil. So it didn't turn out exactly as I wanted. And see, even though this is from my ink pad, it's gonna move because it's water-based. What do you guys think? So I'm guessing that texture from the pencil left some lines and that's why my stamp, when I stamped, it didn't stamp quite how I wanted it. And that's okay, I fixed it with my water painter or you could use a paintbrush. Don't feel like you have to run and buy those. You can use a paintbrush. So what do you guys think? Do you like the Sahara sand? And then you had a little tip to add in that extra. And that actually picked the ink up. <laughs> oh, well, it's a textured flower. Ooh, I have another technique I can show you. So I'm going to move this. We can take this pencil. I almost forgot about this. Um, you can take the end of this. So you, this is wet and I'm activating the end of my pencil. You can come in and add dots with that pencil. So it's activated from the from being wet. And you just add in dots. And it might take a little time. I'm using, I forgot and I used the little one. But see how it leaves that dot? 
So we'll try that. And it might not work as well because I just got it wet. I mean, I just stamped it. So I'm just adding some dots. Because I do like that dotted look. I think, let's say, if you have some dotted stamps, you could also add that onto here to try to put that texture back. I may need to let the middle, middle dry just a little bit. and some little lines just to darken this area. So maybe not perfect. See how I activated my pencil? It's everywhere on the end. Oh, yikes. Glad, glad that was on my grid paper and not here. Just trying to smear that a little. Okay, I think I'm just overworking it. Just leave it alone, Beth. Just leave it alone. Anybody else do that? I can't ever just leave it alone. I gotta keep keep going. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that like it is. And if it dries and I don't love it, I can always go back and add a little bit more pencil without activating it. So now, now when I stamp my greeting, I am going to um use the Stamparatus. So I'm gonna lay these off to the side, especially that brown that I, and let's see. So what do you guys think? I'm gonna cut, um, here's a card base. And we'll stamp our greeting right on top of it. So it's really simple. It doesn't have to be layered. You don't have to use designer series paper. Um, just really simple. And I also have Coastal Cabana. So right now I'm just cutting a Coastal Cabana base. We could layer it up. I just love using these bold colors with our flower color because orange and blues are opposite on the color, color wheel. So that helps, those two colors help each other really pop. What do you guys think? So, and I usually just cut my piece in half. So that's Bermuda Bay. This is Coastal Cabana. Because, because our background's a little bit lighter, the Coastal Cabana, it kind of blends in. But you see how the flower is the center of attention here on our card. So we can cut it down like we did this one and get rid of that white space up there. Or we can just stamp our greeting up there. Or we can do it like I did here. So this one I used basic gray. And I stamped it three or four times to really get that word to show up. I could have used a strip, yes, and I did stamp one, but I didn't like how much of my flower it covered up. So that's why I stamped directly onto my layer. Um, you can do that. There's no rules that say you can't. And it's okay if it overlaps your flower. I just felt like I did all that coloring and a strip covered it up and I didn't I didn't have any boo-boos I wanted to cover up so I just stamped directly onto it. And you'll notice this is shimmery white. So the color is different than the basic white. Can you guys see that? I know sometimes the lighting is difficult. So what do you guys think? You want to um this needs to dry just a tad and I'm probably going to grab my heat tool and plug it in. So that, that way when I stamp my greeting, if we stamp it in that top part, it doesn't spread because we're using classic ink. So. Anybody have an opinion on what we do next? So I'm just drying this, and you can do it from the back.
Ooh, that is really sparkly. I like that. I'm gonna have to, um, sorry, I got myself all tangled up here. Can you guys see that, that sparkly from the paper? I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but wow, I really like that. Hopefully you can see it. I'm not getting any comments from anybody, so I hope you all are still here. Um, I'm not sure what is going on, but so right now I'm just trying to decide which base I want. So that's on Coastal Cabana, and I do like that, but I think I like the Bermuda Bay better because I feel like that darker teal really helps it pop. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure if you guys are commenting. I just want to let you know that I'm not seeing anything. So I'm just going to move forward. Oh, good. Linda, you're still here. I don't know. I I wasn't sure. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Vicky's crafting, of course. So what do you what do you guys think? Um I'm going to grab my my extra plate here so I can do my greeting. Do you guys, um, there's so many things we could stamp. So I really want to know um, what you guys think. I do too, Vicki. Now on this one, I used the Coastal Cabana, but I think with my, my dry pencil, um, the colors are so much darker that this color worked. And I think with the watercolor, I really, really like um, the Bermuda Bay. Hey, Tracy, no worries. We're actually at the end. Of course, today I took lots of extra time. Sorry uh, to those of you who are thinking, Beth, this is only supposed to be an hour. But we got to watercoloring and making decisions. And well, we just spent a little more time together. So on this one, I used the word friend from Happiness Abounds. And see how this is kind of warping? Um, you can grab a block a clean one and I just lay it on top to kind of help it flatten out while I'm deciding. So this stamp set is gorgeous. It has Let's Celebrate You. You could certainly stamp that onto your card. Um, we're making a friendship card. Um, it's all about friends today and I would love to send this card to one of my crafty friends. So if you watched this live and you've watched it all the way through, I'm going to draw a name to get this card that we made today. Um, because I have made lots of cards for my friends this week. So my friends, even though today is Friendship Day, hopefully I'll see some of you next week and I'll be able to deliver some of these. So some of the um, greetings that I used when I made sets for my friends is I used this happy birthday. I love peaceful moments, but life is better with a friend like you. I don't know if that's going to fit on my card unless we make it a landscape card, but this has let's celebrate you. That could be a birthday card. It could be lots of things. Um, I love this new perched in a tree stamp set. No matter the season, I'm here for you. I am here for you. I love that saying. I've used that on mine. And then on my gift bags, I use the Friendships Refresh the Soul. You could certainly stamp that on the outside of this card. And then you're sending it to your friend to let them know how much their friendship means to you. Um, on this one, this does have a cherished friend. Um, or you could stamp it just because. Uh, what do you guys think? Um the Shaded Summer has some friend um, saying, some friendships are just meant to be. Uh, and I love how this has two fonts to it. Uh, love you, friend. So, um, and if you had just a little space you wanted to stamp in, you could use like a hello you or just hello. You know I love stamping hello on the front of my cards. So what do you guys think? I need some help with a greeting. And then we're going to assemble when we're done. So, I know, Linda, there's so many choices. Um, 
so, so, so many choices. So one of y'all are going to get this card because um, after this live, tomorrow morning, I'm going to draw a winner. So anybody that's missed us, some of our regulars I know aren't here right now, and that's okay. We all have lots of things going on, and of course, I went way over today, but I just love my time with you. So anybody that watches the replay, they'll have a little bit of a chance to get in on it and make a comment or give me some love. Don't forget to love, love, love my video. Um, so this one has love you, friend. So that's what Vicki picked. Let's, let's go with it. Vicki gets to pick today. So this one says friend. And then this one... See, that just helped it just a little bit. I'm going to use my Stamparatus to stamp this. So, love you, friend. I don't think, I don't know if I've used the stamp set. This, so we could put this up here. Do you guys want to trim some of the white off? What do you think? So, I'm going to pull this in. And this is a cling stamp, so we don't need that. Um, we don't need that mat. I'm going to pull it out just a little bit from here, and I think I want it. I love when my things just kind of overlap. So, what do you guys think? In the top part, and then we can trim some of that white off. Trim it down a little bit. Do you guys like it at the top? Or we could fit it on the bottom. Um, and like I said, we can ink and stamp and ink and stamp and make sure that those words turn out dark enough. So what do you guys think? Bottom right or top right? And I haven't used this stamp, so I don't know if it stamps straight, but if you are handwriting a message to your friend, it probably wouldn't be super straight. So we're not going to worry about if it's perfect because we just want to send, um, we just want to send our friend a card. So put it in the top and trim it. Okay. So I'm going to grab my plate here. Maybe <laughs> I can get it in there and I'm going to put a magnet right here. And I'm going to put this right here because I want this to stay really flat. Maybe even over here. It's still warped a little bit. When we adhere it down, it'll be fine. But when I stamp my greeting, I want to make sure that it's it's going to stamp well. And like I said, I'm going with it. Okay, so I used basic gray on my other one. Actually, I think I, think I stamped my flower in basic gray too. So what do you guys think? You want to use brown? Um, do you want to use the uh, shaded or the shaded, my goodness, the Sahara sand <laughs> um, or even the um, early espresso? Since we stamped our flower in this color, I tend to stamp my greeting in the same color that I used for my flower. So this one I used basic gray and then I colored in with pencils. So I used basic gray on my greeting. Okay. I'm gonna prepare my card base here. I'm just folding it in half and getting it ready. Tracy votes early espresso. So if it's going to overlap your flower anywhere, I do recommend using a dark color and stamping it a couple times. And it will show up. So, some fonts may be harder to see, but this one has kind of a bold font in the beginning. Yeah, early espresso. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So thank you to everyone who stuck around with me. So I'm pressing on this and I'm holding it there, but I don't want to press too much because I don't want it to, to spread. 
I don't want to mess up my words. And I think I'm going to ink it again and stamp it again. I want it to be really dark. Ooh, I like it. What do you guys think? So I'll clean that later. I just use my chamois. If you're new to stamping and you're wondering what I do, um, we have a Simply Chamois that just uses water. I'll just use that later um, on there. Or you can peel it off and um, use your stamp and scrub and just put it on a block and, and use it on your stamp and scrub. There we go. What do you guys think? The results are very different from just coloring versus activating with your water painters. And also, I would stamp an inside piece for this as well. Now, to me, this is not as bright as the white, so I don't know if I would use very vanilla. Let me see if I have a piece of very vanilla laying around here. I just did cards with the with very vanilla, but I don't I think I put it all away. So you can either use the same cardstock for the inside or here. I have a very vanilla base here. Let's see how it compares. So this is very vanilla and this is basic white. So you can kind of see this falls a little bit in between these. So you could choose either color to go on the inside of your card for your message, or you could use more of this card stock, which I do have that cut. But this card stock is a little more expensive. Uh, you only get 10 sheets in a pack. So if you don't wanna use it on the inside of your card, just pick one of those other two. Now, this is warped and not flat. <laughs> so, you either want to use liquid glue or seal plus or tear and tape. You want this textured piece and piece that we've really worked with to stick. So, I'm going to use, and this is a little dangerous for me, I'm going to use tear and tape. So, I will finish the inside of the card before I send it to you, okay? Whoever wins it, I will, I will definitely finish the inside. And I'll probably just stamp maybe a little, the little sunflower. And it will just, it won't be colored. It'll just be in there. You could always color it in when you get this card and change it up if you want. And of course, it'll come with an envelope because I want you to mail it to a friend. I want you to use it. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Vicki. And thank you, Tracy. I appreciate that. You know, sometimes things work out. <laughs> sometimes they don't and sometimes they do. So I used tear and tape because I really want this to, whoops, make sure you go it the right way. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to trim it, didn't I? Shoot. Let me bring in my trimmer. <laughs> Let's trim it up a little bit. Sorry, guys, I completely forgot. Let's see. So it's at five inches. Let me take half an inch off. It's okay. Uh... That's all right. I'll just put more, I'll put new tape on. No big deal. So there we go. So it just took away a little bit of that white. Good morning, Susan. Thanks for joining us. We're right at the assembly part, but I hope you'll watch the replay. We did some watercoloring today and had some fun with the water painters and the watercolor pencils. So there we go. There, that's better. Now I am going to use my take your pick tool.
And Susan, just so you know, make sure you love the video. Or And I know you commented good morning, but I am going to give this card away to somebody. It's friendship day, so I want to give this card to someone so they can send a friend a card and let them know how much they mean to that person. Okay. So, and tear and tape is permanent. Once I stick this to the card base, it ain't moving. So if it's crooked, well, then that was part of the design, right? <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, I'm going to try really hard. Oh, I think I did pretty good. At least I didn't do it upside down. Now, if I had done it upside down, which I accidentally laid it that way the first, the first time before I took the stuff off the tape, we would just cut this apart and glue it onto a new card base. So, don't worry about that. Don't fret over those things. They can be fixed. So what do you guys think? I hope you enjoyed it. I really do. I had so much fun with y'all. And I love to see what you pick. I don't often do it this way. And I'm glad we tested out this paper. So just to recap what we used... We used Celebrate Sunflowers... And for our greeting, on the card we did together, we used Shaded Summer. On my sample card, I used Happiness Abounds, the word friend. This is a retired designer series paper that we had, I think, a couple years ago. But I have tons of that laying around, so I just used what I had. Um, and we used the Stamparatus uh, for my flower. On both of these flowers, I used the exact same colors. I used um, crushed curry, pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, early espresso. The background on this one is the Coastal Cabana. And remember, this pencil is darker on the end than the Bermuda Bay. On this one, I used just Bermuda Bay. Or I mean Bermuda Bay and Coastal Cabana. Sorry about that. And we activated this one with the water painter. So, and um, this is on basic white cardstock and I just colored. And then this one is on the shimmery white cardstock and we use the water painter. So I don't know if you guys can pick up that shimmer, but it just has all these little speckles in it and it's so pretty. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I know we spent an extra hour together this morning. That's two weeks in a row, <laughs> but I'm glad you guys enjoy it. I certainly do. And, oh, Vicki, I, I know. I wish I could go live more, and maybe once school starts, I will be able to do some lunchtime lives. We'll have to see, but for the summer, I just, um, we're just not inside. It's beautiful out today so we will probably be out hanging out by the pool and enjoying our last few weeks of summer before school but once school starts I'm gonna try to be live a lot more and spend a lot more time with you because I enjoy my crafting time with you ladies and I love to see what you pick and I love to see your ideas you know, I have ideas coming into these Saturday morning lives, but I enjoy our crafty time together and our collaboration. So thanks so much for being part of my tribe. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Um, please share my video with your friends or invite them to watch along with us. If you need any Stampin' Up! products, um, you can go to shop.stampandcreatewithbeth.com. And um, browse. Don't forget, it's celebration. <coughs> Excuse me. So for every $50 you spend um, in my store, you're going to get to pick a celebration item. Those are exclusive free items. It only lasts till August, and it, all the products are while supplies last. So we had a product sell out in two weeks. So if there's something on your list that you want, try to go ahead and place your order early and get those free items. Um, there's lots to choose from. There's stamp sets, there's paper, and there's um, a couple die sets. 
Thank you, Susan. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, you need help with anything, uh, designing, color choices, layouts, just opinions, ideas for stamp sets and, and themes for your cards, you know I'm always here for you. You can message me anytime on Facebook or email me at stampandcreatewithbeth at gmail.com and I'm happy to help. That's what I'm here for and I enjoy it. So everyone take care, have a beautiful weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye.